Public health can be a challenging but extremely rewarding field to work in. But building and retaining the workforce is key to weathering current and future public health challenges. To discuss this issue, we're joined by Dr. Brian Castrucci. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So talk to us about this incredible study, you know, and everything that you just recently did. Well, we were able to look at turnover in health departments between 2017 and 2021 using our Public Health Workforce Interest and Needs Survey. And really the top line is, we've lost about 50% of the workforce between 17 and 21. And when you look at younger people, it was 75%. So when you have this kind of turnover, you're losing experience in that health department. And so when the next pandemic comes, folks won't have had that experience. And so we have these two kind of things working together. We have people who have been older and who've been delaying retirement, as they start to retire, if the young group starts to leave, that's a perfect storm. And it means really a dangerous time for our nation. And so tell me, as far as this study and everything, you said 50%, right? So what did your study find was the reason? Well, I think we're, we're understanding it's burnout, it's salaries, it's a whole myriad of things, but, but it's fixable. Right, we need to really invest in how we um, lead our public health workforce in our managerial training. We need to have loan repayment. We need to make public health a job that is that is really enticing to people coming out of their MPH programs. And and this is something that is controllable. I mean, if these data were for physicians, there already already would have been congressional hearings and more money to HRSA. And so talk to me also about the importance of data modernization and what that means. Well, data modernization is so important because we really need to understand the, the landscape of the pandemic and our health. And right now, data are old and, and segmented and not at the right level of geographic aggregation. So I might need you know, data at, at a county level, but I don't even have a state level. We can't continue to have data malpractice in public health, but we also really need to focus on data justice because data and how we collect data is, is rooted in the same systemic oppression and biases that all of our practices. Data are not, are not clean, they're the original sin. And so what we have to do is really focus data justice on making sure that those who are, who are reflected in the data have a voice in how it's collected. And that's the only way we're really gonna modernize our data. So there is no data modernization without data justice. So talk to us about the De Beaumont Foundation. Well, the De Beaumont Foundation is a private philanthropy that we've been working in, in public health for really since we started in 1998. And so we are dedicated to ensuring that every community has its chance to achieve its optimal health. And we do that by working in policy and working in the workforce and developing partnerships. So something that's really critical to us right now is partnerships between public health and the business community. This is a critical partnership that we need. And what we saw during the pandemic is that the relationship didn't exist. We need to have those relationships so that when we have to make hard decisions, we are flanked by our business leaders in the community and our faith leaders and all the other partners who can support these decisions. And, and not that they're easy decisions, but they can be more palatable if we understand why it's happening and that we really took everyone else into consideration as we made these decisions. Well, amazing work, amazing study. Thank you again, Brian, so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you.